Hey there, welcome to the review of the Aspect 230 from Lincoln Electric on the aluminum side of welding. Today we're going to go over the AC functionality, do some aluminum welding. Um, I got all sorts of stuff lined up. Got some clean new 6061, I got some dirty cast aluminum off engines, I got some pop cans, I got some aluminum foil. Just tried to get a, a good sample and a wide variety of stuff so hopefully you know most people that are welding aluminum will get at least a little something out of this video so before we dive into the welding I'm going to give you another brief overview of the functions on the welder it's been a week since I started playing with the aluminum and I'm still not done going through everything there's a ton of features on this thing if uh, if you buy one of these, you'll probably spend a month going through and playing with all the features and fine-tuning it. But we're going to go over the basics today, and I'll show you what's available. And then we'll try to touch on as many of those features as we can while we're welding the material that I have on hand here. So again, we're going to fire it up here. Let it go through its little song and dance. Now, while this green light's flashing, that means it's turning on. If it's solid green, that means it's ready to weld. And I've ran into an issue twice now where that light just turns off and you can't weld. So I'm not sure what causes that, but a quick off and on will reset it and then it works fine. So um, we're in AC mode, so that's the wave. We're on our um, high frequency start, we're on our two step for our pedal. Now we get to go through all this down here. So as we scroll through this, when we're on the auto setting, this is off, we can then come over to, and then it goes to amperage. We have our frequency, it goes down to 40 and up to 400. We have our balance. That goes down to 35, which I tried that. It doesn't work very well at 35. It goes up to 99. Then we have our electrode positive and our electrode negative and it sets the boundaries of how many amps at the positive and the negative side of the wave um, that you're going to allow it to go to. So now if we go back to auto and we turn this on, then it'll scroll back and forth between auto and the frequency. So you can set the frequency and what that'll do is it automatically adjusts these other three settings for you. So now we're scrolling between auto, frequency, and our amperage. So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this on off for now. Now our other functions, the pulsing, that's still all the same. You go through your uh, Pre-flow, post-flow, your starting amperage, your ending amperage, max amperage, and then your three pulse settings. We're going to leave that off. I don't really ever use pulse on aluminum, um, again, unless I'm welding out of position, going uphill or whatever it may be. So last but not least, if we hold this select button down for like three seconds, maybe it's five, we got a menu here. We press the select button. We can change our wave, for, uh, our wave shape, from a soft square, sine, square, and triangular. I haven't even gotten to mess with these yet, but there's a description in the manual of what these will, uh, different wave shapes will help you do. And then there's the diameter of your tungsten. 
then there's some other settings. And then you hold down on the A button to exit. So now we're ready to weld, so we'll get after it. Okay, so we are going to be welding some 6061. Just got a T joint. I'll do a horizontal fillet here. I got the frequency set at 125 and the balance is set at 70. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and change our auto wave shape on to automatically set our balance. We'll try that out here. Leave the frequency set at the 125. So the difference between having the auto on versus off. Um, my beat appearance is actually better with the automatic mode turned on. Um, didn't notice a huge difference between the two on this cleaner 6061. Here was a 16th filler rod, here was an 8th inch, and these were both with the auto balance turned off. And then here was with 8th inch rod with the auto balance turned on. So now we're going to run at 175 hertz with the auto balance on. Lastly, we'll try it with the auto balance off, and I still have my balance set at 70 manually. So, with the auto balance mode here, uh, here was off, and here was on. I don't notice a huge difference with it on or off, but I'm fairly comfortable setting my balance settings on a clean 6061 and a uniform thickness material like this here. Now what I'm, I'm excited to try it on next is going to be some automotive parts where the thickness varies as you go through the part because it's cast, not to mention um, it's cast, so that's going to be a challenge, getting the settings tweaked right. So we're going to jump into that and play with some of these automatic settings. Here I'm working on an intake manifold off a diesel engine. It's cast aluminum. It was absolutely just plastered in carbon and soot and oil when I started on it. Uh, threw it in the parts washer. Hit it with a stainless brush, um, dumped a can of brake parts cleaner into it, and it's still very, very dirty. So what I'm using here is a 4047 filler rod, which was recommended to me by Jamie over at WeldingTipsAndTricks.com, and we're welding on a frequency of 60 and a balance of 53 right now. I got my max amperage set at 150. Man, it's really balling my tungsten up. But it does a really nice job um, of not getting too deep into this cast and just wetting the surface without bringing all that junk up to the top and giving us lots of porosity. So I'm going to give it one more bead here and then I'm going to start to play with my settings. So I'm 
actually pretty impressed with how this is going um, as far as welding on this cast. It's usually a nightmare. My tungsten really doesn't seem to be holding up very well at all though. I'm running a 2% uh, lanthanated blue. It's 330 seconds. I should probably be running 8th inch. This machine's set up for 330 seconds stock, so if you change to 8th inch, you got to go in and adjust for that 8th inch. Um, and that's going to adjust some of the automatic features, like the... Uh, uh, this auto frequency feature which I'm going to turn on right now now to me that didn't sound a lot different but it felt a whole lot different it felt a lot smoother my tungsten retained its shape. And I was at almost a full pedal there to uh, get that aluminum to liquefy there. Whereas with these other passes, I was maybe quarter to half pedal. And it, su it surprises me that it adjusted it everything that low. The auto post flow doesn't really get my vote, but this auto waveform in the AC mode is definitely getting my vote right now on this cast aluminum. So there I turned up the frequency to 150 and so far whatever frequency I put it at it definitely seems to do a really good job of balancing everything else for us. So I'm going to get crazy here. I got the, the frequency maxed out We're at 400 hertz. I just want to see what it looks like, what it does. I'm sure it's going to be loud and obnoxious. So I can definitely tell that my my bead is focused to a very narrow area because it's just pulling all that crap up to the surface and uh, I'm gonna have to go clean my part. So if some of you are watching this um, with realistic expectations in mind, you know how is it gonna perform for your custom welding or your production welding. And then there are some of you that want to see the uh, boundaries of this machine, like me. So, common test is welding pop cans. Fortunately, I like to drink a lot of pop, so I got some pop cans here. And then on the AC mode, for whatever reason, I can only get it to go down to 8 amps to start, but I can get it to end at 2. So, I'm not sure if that's a function of the high frequency aspect or what, but we'll try it. I'm going to see if I can start on a can without blowing the can out. So for frequency I have it turned down to 40 hertz and it's still on the automatic uh, wave wave balance mode or wave, wave shape mode. I keep calling that the wrong thing. And Houston, we have a, a blow through. <laughs> that, that did not work. So, th thin part of the can, nah, not going to happen. Now we'll go to our, our ends.
The smell is unbelievably horrible. I brushed the heck out of these cans and my god there's some chemicals on these cans. It kind of makes me glad that I don't actually drink canned beer. I drink bottled beer because wow there's some nasty stuff going on to coat that aluminum but it's not pretty but I did I did fuse to both cans and actually once I got all that paint crap burned off the can it was actually welding pretty decent but Definitely not a fun project. You should probably be wearing a respirator to be doing this. Alright, just for kicks and grins, I'll do a see if I can't do a lap joint on some aluminum foil, but you saw how easily it blew right through that side of that pop can, so we won't. I would say Figuratively, I'm not going to hold my breath, but I am because it smells like crap in here from those beer cans. So I figured out why I couldn't strike an arc. Uh, apparently, I had my max amperage set at 15, so that'd be my pedals all the way down to get 15. And I have off at 2, so that would be just barely pressing the pedal. But my started amperage is 8. So I actually had to press the pedal over halfway down to get to 8 amps to start. Uh, as you can see, welding aluminum foil is probably not going to work. I have one other idea, and I will give that a try, just a humorous. Since our starting amperage is high, but our continuous amperage can be lower, you can try a trick where you start on a thicker piece of material and then reduce your amperage and move over to your thinner piece, and then, you know, if you have a minimum starting amperage issue like we do here and like you definitely do with the square wave where you can only start at 10. Um, I've used this trick a lot welding on thin wall stuff. It's not going to work unless you consider welding a eighth inch piece of filler rod to aluminum foil, welding aluminum foil, then I guess we did that. But Luckily my profession doesn't require the welding of pop cans or aluminum foil, ever, so I'm okay there. Okay, after further review of why I could only get down to a starting amperage of 8, I was playing around with different tungsten diameters because with the, the pop cans and the aluminum foil, I was welding with 330 seconds, which was way too big. I should have had, you know, obviously the smallest diameter tungsten I had, which I have 040 on hand, but anyway, um, when you go into the menu where I showed you before, where you can select your, your, uh, your wave shape, um, I was messing around with my tungsten diameter. And so we'll set that. We'll exit out of here. And then we'll go back to our starting amperage. Well, now I can go down to 5. I, I actually had it still set on 8th inch before. That's why it could only go down to 8 amps. But that's going to dictate how low, I guess, the starting amperage is. Um, so now, now that I have that figured out, now you know. And that concludes the review of the Aspect 230, um, not only the aluminum welding, but the welder as a whole. My demo period for the welder has ended, and as you can see, I'm back using my square wave for now. So, 
in conclusion on the aluminum welding, the Aspect 230 really, really shines on the aluminum side. Um, if you're looking at maybe upgrading from a Square Wave 200, hands down, the Aspect 230 is absolutely worth the upgrade. Um, the features that it has really lend themselves to um, increasing the weldability with that dirty cast aluminum that I'm dealing with on automotive parts. And then, not only that, but I definitely noticed a big difference just welding the, the cleaner 6061 60, as well. But I, I really noticed a huge difference in weldability of those automotive parts. So, um, aside from that, as a whole, um, kind of to go back over, you know, everything about the welder, um, I'm really not a fan of the, the ground cable length. Um, I actually ran into an issue while I was demoing the welder where I needed all 25 foot of my leads and obviously the ground was 10 foot shorter, so um, I had to get a little creative there to extend my ground. and. I made it work, but um, if I'm going to be purchasing an Aspect 230, I think I will probably buy the bare bones uh, kit rather than buying that one pack. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make my own ground cable and make it longer. And I'm also going to start researching the heck out of torches because I really like this Ultraflex hose. And I really hated that thick hose that came with the Aspect 230's torch. Um, ampacity wise, the torch, the PTA 26 that comes with the Aspect, it was really nice. Um, ampacity wise, you know, it didn't get super hot as soon as I started welding on aluminum. Whereas this PTA 17 that comes with the square wave, it gets hot within just a couple minutes and unless you're wearing some a pretty thick torch glove it gets really uncomfortable uncomfortable to hold so I'm gonna start researching torches and I think improvements can be made there um, you know I think Lincoln makes an awesome machine I think the Aspect 230 is great and uh, aside from that I actually used the flow regulator that came with the square wave and um, so I can't comment on the upgraded quality of the flow regulator that comes with the Aspect 230 and the one pack but I'm sure it's a lot better than this one um, and you're obviously going to need the foot pedal um, the foot pedal works great um, I have no nothing really major to say about the foot pedal and other than that, I think that pretty much wraps it up. So definitely would recommend the Aspect 230 if you're looking at doing anything more than just minor hobby welding or if you're welding on extremely thin stuff to where you need that super low starting and ending amperage or if you're welding on really thick stuff. So, you know, really thick aluminum, um, and you need that max amp output. Those are all reasons you should be looking at the Aspect 230. Another reason um, that you should look at it is, if you're like me, your skill level is not quite as high. The Aspect 230 absolutely helps the novice welder shine because all the automatic settings that it has um, takes care of everything if you don't have a super technical um, understanding of all the different settings involved. The 230 just, you know, makes it foolproof basically. You can just dive right in and set minimal things and it'll take care of the rest. So, thanks for watching and hopefully we'll see you for a future video.